Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're ready to find the moment of inertia of an I-beam relative to the y-axis. So here we drew a y-axis right down the middle of the I-beam in this direction. Now we're going to find the moment of inertia about the y-axis and then eventually about the center of mass right there at the origin. So here what we can see is we have three sections. We have the horizontal section here. We have a similar horizontal section, which now when it's rotating about the y-axis, that's the center of mass right here. So it's rotating about the center mass, about the center mass, and here it's also rotating. This section right here is also rotating about the center of mass. So to find those, we know that the moment of inertia then, relative to an axis, is going to be equal to 1 12th, the area of that section, times the distance in that dimension squared. Now, that, what I mean by that is if we're rotating about the y-axis, we take about this distance. If this section is rotating about the y-axis, we talk about this distance right here. So, for section one, we can say that the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis for section one is equal to 1 12th, the area of that section, which would be, well, we'll just write it down, the area of the section, times that distance squared, so it would be this distance right here, which is 8 squared. So it's 1 over 12 times the area, which is 2 times 8, which is 16, times 8 squared, or 64, this uh, multiplication here. So with a calculator, that's 16 times 64 divided by 12, and we get 85 0.33. Of course, the units will be centimeters to the fourth power. Now we have two of those, so we can say that this is also equal to i relative to y, the y-axis for section 2 as well. So we have two similar sections. Now we still need to find the moment of inertia of section 3. That should be a very small quantity. So i sub y now for the third section is equal to 1 12th the area which is 2 by 10, 2 times 10, times, that would be this total distance squared, so it would be 2 squared, and that's why it's a small quantity, because there's not a lot of area far away from the axis of rotation. So this is equal to 20 times 4, 20 times 4 divided by 12, so that's 80 divided by 12 equals, that would be 6.67 centimeters to the fourth power. So it's a very small moment of inertia for that section right there. So the total I relative to the y-axis is I1 plus I2 plus I3, which is equal to 85.33 plus 85.33 and plus 6.67. And let's see what that is equal to. 85.33 times 2 plus 6.67 equals, and that would be 177 centimeters to the fourth power, rounded to the nearest centimeter to the fourth power. Now, we're going to add that to what we found last time, because to find the moment of inertia relative to the origin, we simply add the moment of inertia, whoop, that should be an equal sign, the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis plus the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis. So, adding those together, plus 177 centimeters to the fourth power equals 170 added to this is 1500 plus another 7 or 1507 centimeters to the fourth power, which is the moment of inertia of that I-beam relative to the origin which can also be considered the second moment of area, which gives you an indication as to the resistance of the torsion that you can place on the I-beam. Of course, notice that the largest contributor to that moment of inertia was definitely the two plates at the end, which is what makes the I-beam so strong. Notice there's not a lot of strength to be gained from the center section, but from the two end sections, we gain a lot of the moment of inertia, which is a big portion of this number and a big portion of that number. So that's how that's done. That's how you find the moment of inertia of an I-beam.